From the murky waters of the sportsman's paradise, stories emerge. Stories of the generations of people who have shared in the bounties of the land. Stories of communities that have persevered through natural disasters. Stories of the abundance of fish, wildlife, and adventures that create an ecosystem rich in diversity. And from the silted banks of the mighty Mississippi to the soggy marsh bottoms, from the tops of towering pine forests to the depths of the salty gulf, human and animal have shared this fortune for centuries. Enjoy these stories as told by outdoor journalists who travel across our state documenting the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Welcome to Bayou Wild. We're here at Morton Seafood Restaurant in Madisonville on the Chifuncta River. Don Dubuque, Martha Spencer here. Today's episode is about the people that work for the angler. What do we mean by that? Well, the people that get the product to you, the anglers who take you out, and everybody that helps make it a successful day. One character we're going to meet, if you haven't met him already, Captain Ryan Lambert of Cajun Fishing Adventures. You know, a lot of fishermen from one time or another say, boy, what a life. Get to get paid to fish for a living. Well, Ryan Lambert will kind of tell you the straight skinny on that situation. Now, can you say, okay, you want trout, you want reds? No, you take what Mother Nature gives you. Because I've learned from hunting and fishing, if you fight Mother Nature, you're going to lose every time. So let's say we're hunting. You know, we're gonna get a, a nasty, cold, windy day. I'm either duck hunting or goose hunting. If it's nice and calm, I'll, I'll go quail hunting if that's available. You know, the same thing with fishing. If it's a nice day, I'm gonna go sight fishing. I'm gonna go trout fishing. If it's bad, you gotta go and hide and survival fish just to catch fish. You have to take, not let the customer decide what's gonna happen. You let the weather and mother nature decide what you're gonna do and you're gonna be a lot more successful at the end of the day. And before we go talk to him, we're going to introduce you to Dennis Bro, who's a marketing rep. He works with all sorts of brands in the fishing and hunting industry to get the product from the vendor to the store and then to you and show you how to use it and why they're good. So, so one of the great things is a lot of the, the factories that we represent, um, whether it be Gamakatsu or Grundens or any of these other companies, um, we have the ability to have a lot of input in, in, in the, the R&D side. So if they have an idea, they come to us and say, hey, you know, try this out. Or they say, we need, you know, what do you need for your area? And we give them ideas, they come up with a prototype, we get to test it out. Um, and, it, and it's really neat to be able to see your ideas turn into product. And we'll close it out with another great dish, fried stuffed flounder with Joe Boudreaux, chef at Frenier Landing in Laplace. So make sure you open up. The inside, make sure all this is inside nice and coated. Now is that just egg and water or is it egg, egg and milk? Or? Egg and water is how we do it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been working us for almost 10 years now. It'll be 10 years very soon. Happy anniversary here at Thank Frenier you. Lane. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what this is, this is a seasoned flour. Okay. Um, traditionally, when we uh, go to a seafood restaurant, you have a fish fry, which is more cornbread. But here, we like to keep it a little bit different, and it's a seasoned flour which is where you, all your seasonings packed into this right here. Closed captioning made possible by CETO.com. Become a member. I've been using Louisiana fish fry products so much, even the kids are getting into it. Find the bag, pour and boil, a great crawfish every time. And whether you're boiling crawfish, shrimp, or crabs, Louisiana fish fry products use the perfect blend of garlic, onion, spices, and salt for your seafood boil. So look for the bright yellow bag and pour and boil with Louisiana fish fry products. If you're lucky enough to bag a deer or a hog this season, bring it here to Double D. Double D processes hogs and exotic game and guarantees your product is always the meat you brought to Double D. Double D meats in Bogalusa, home of country smoked, spicy jalapeno cheddar, and other customized flavors. Bring your deer or your hog here to Double D where you always get your meat back in return. It's worth a drive to Bogalusa from anywhere. Double D.
right. Ooh, ooh, that's a brute right there. That's a brute. So when you're going red fishing, you can do the same old, same old you've been doing. Maybe use a popping cork and some shrimp. But if you really want to challenge and have a lot of fun, go ultralight, go crankbait, or spinnerbait. This is a performance-based business. You don't perform, and you don't entertain, and you don't make people happy. They're not coming back. And one other thing, when you have a bad trip, and you don't catch fish, don't be afraid to give some of that money back, because if you don't, they say, I'm never going back there again. We didn't catch nothing. Just recently on a duck hunt, the guy said, man, I was having a terrible day. I'm in stuck in traffic. I got in, that, in Atlanta when the uh, airport shut down. He said, you calling me, giving me some of my money back. You made my day, and we will be back. Our ultimate goal is to have birds reproducing in the wild where we no longer have to do reintroductions and someday have a self-sustaining population of cranes. These cranes are uh, part of our heritage and they're back in Louisiana and they're going to stay. The birds really like this habitat um, and they're going to continue to use it. Please visit lawff.org and make a donation. Fishing tackle, hunting gear, and apparel can add up quick. More brands don't succeed than do in what can be a cutthroat industry. With miles of aisles of fishing tackle, it's easy to see how overwhelming these hobbies can be. That's where Dennis Bro steps in. As someone with a passion for the outdoors and a strong drive to succeed, he's exactly the guy these companies look for to get their product into your hands. I'm an independent sales rep and our agency represented about 24 lines of hunting, fishing, and outdoor products. I'm the guy that goes into all the accounts. I'm, I'm the one who deals directly with the, uh, with the retailers. So any, uh, you know, any retailer in the New Orleans area, I'm the direct contact for the factories that we represent. It's his job to market a product and get it to a store near you. Once it's there, he helps educate the seller on why something is a must-have item. The goal is to shop local and get the word out on a specific brand. As a representative of different brands, um, one, one, of the, one of the most important, and I came from retail before this, and so I saw that side of the business, and a big part of it is educating not only the consumer, but educating the staff of the dealer, uh, of the retailer. Because if they don't have the tools, the knowledge about each product, they can't share that knowledge with the customer. They may not realize that you know this one hook is different from this other hook, you know the out barber, in barber, whatever it is. So if if we're able to educate the, the the dealer, they can educate the consumer. And then nowadays with social media, um, it gives us the opportunity to you know I'll go into dealers and and I'll do a little you know one minute you know um, product education video that they can then go ahead and share on their platforms and instead of having to educate every single consumer one-on-one -on -one in the store, they can shoot that, that educational video out and before you know it, you got 10,000 views. It, it, it's forced sales representatives to kind of think outside the box and kind of have to be fluid with the changing you know, retail climate. It's, it's a lot of these big dot-com companies, they don't build brands. Um, the, the independent dealers are the ones that build the brands. They're the ones that educate the customers. Um, so we want to be able to keep driving that business into the brick and mortar as opposed to dot com. What someone like Dennis does, they're our go-between to the local people. So I don't know the dealers in Louisiana. I see a few of them uh, here and there, but what, what makes it so important is have someone like Dennis who's plugged in, he's from this area, he knows he's an outdoors person, he knows everybody, and uh, he, he knows how to get around to the stores. And, and present your product in a favorable way, so hopefully these guys take it in the stores and, and will sell it. So, so one of the great things is a lot of the, the factories that we represent, um, whether it be Gamakatsu or Grundens or any of these other companies, um, we have the ability to have a lot of input in, in, in the, the R&D side. So if they have an idea, they come to us and say, hey, you know, try this out, or they say, we need, you know, what do you need for your area? And we give them ideas, they come up with a prototype, we get to test it out. Um, and, it, and it's really neat to be able to see your ideas turn into product. While it's not an easy task, the job comes with a lot of rewards. Competition is steep and vendors can spot frauds. 
Dennis remembers a certain someone at a school talk many years ago that nudged him in the right direction to follow this career path. This goes back to, I believe it was either 1999 or 2000. Um, at the time, I was uh, at Archbishop Rummel High School in Metairie, and Don came to career day. And I remember sitting in class, and you've got a guy comes in, and you know, um, I'm, a, I'm a lawyer, a guy comes in, and I'm a dentist, or whatever. Well, Don walks in and um, immediately had, you know, such a great personality and, um, you know, started talking about being a writer, working in the outdoor industry. Um, and I just remember just being amazed that you, can, that you can do that, that you can actually have a career working in the outdoor industry and, um, you know, go to work every day talking to people who have the same passion that you have about the outdoors. And so it was, it was really neat to see that and then, you know, kind of as life goes and, you know, you, you don't really think about it and you go to school for, you know, whatever it is, and then here I am, you know, it, working in the outdoor industry, you know, doing an event with Don. Um, it's just, it's really cool to, to have that, that history and come back, you know, come around full circle. If you can walk inside an account and you can talk the product and you can and, and you've got real life uh, you know ex experience with the products, um, it, it goes a long way. So having a passion for the outdoors is extremely important to be successful in this industry. Hi, I'm Miss Louisiana Holly Conway on behalf of the Louisiana Propane Dealers. I'm sure you know that clean, affordable propane gas is used in houses across our state. It's used in cooking, hot water heaters, drying clothes, and heating homes. But did you know that if you ever run out of propane, you need a certified dealer to inspect your system for leaks before it's refilled? That's the law. Propane is a safe and exceptional energy source, and we want to keep it that way. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. Most avid anglers at one time or another have given thought to becoming a fishing guide. To fish for a living seems like a dream come true. But one of the first and most successful Louisiana charter boat and lodge operators is owner of Cajun Fishing Adventures in Buras, Captain Ryan Lambert, who says a lot of guides don't make it because they're in it for the wrong reasons. Well, first of all, it doesn't matter if you're a great fisherman. There's a lot of great fishermen out there. This is an entertainment business. Plain and simple. You have to learn how on your worst days is when people appreciate you the least. On your, on your great days, when it's so easy, that's when everybody loves you. You know, it's not about that. It's about when the fish aren't biting, you have to entertain these people and keep them going. You can't let them see you sweat. And you gotta understand that if, you, if you're gonna build a lodge, you need to build a lodge. You need to go and look for, what do you wanna see when you go to lodge? You want a bathroom that you don't have to share with four or five people. You, you want a nice bed with a good mattress and good sheets. All the little things that go into it is what you have to think about. And also, you can't call in sick. There's no calling in sick when you're a guy. They got people waiting on you at the dock. You got a stomach ache, you drank too much last night, that's your tough luck. You get yourself out of bed, you gotta go. No big deal, just suck it up and go. Lambert says to make it in the guide business, you have to learn to deal with uncooperative weather, demanding customers, and of course, fish that don't always bite. Strip, here he comes, strip, strip. Gosh, dang it, he didn't take it. There was two of them there together. You know, it's, it's a happy medium, but if they're not biting, you know, you, you, you've got, you got to show the way, you know, and so, you know, it's not magic. They don't bite every day. They don't eat every day. When they're biting good, everything's fine, it's easy. When they're not, it's tough. Now, can you say, okay, you want trout, you want reds? No, you take what Mother Nature gives you. Because I've learned from hunting and fishing, if you fight Mother Nature, you're going to lose every time. So let's say we're hunting. You know, if we're going to get a, a nasty, cold, windy day, I'm either duck hunting or goose hunting. 
if it's nice and calm, I'll, I'll go quail hunting if that's available. You know, the same thing with fishing. If it's a nice day, I'm going to go sight fishing. I'm going to go trout fishing. If it's bad, you're going to go and hide and survival fish just to catch fish. You have to take, not let the customer decide what's going to happen. You let the weather and mother nature decide what you're going to do, and you're going to be a lot more successful at the end of the day. All right, ooh, ooh, that's a brute right there. That's a brute. So when you're going red fishing, you can do the same old, same old you've been doing. Maybe use a popping cork and some shrimp. But if you really want to challenge and have a lot of fun, go ultralight, go crankbait, or spinnerbait. This is a performance-based business. You don't perform, and you don't entertain, and you don't make people happy. They're not coming back. And one other thing, when you have a bad trip, and you don't catch fish, don't be afraid to give some of that money back, because if you don't, they say, I'm never going back there again. We didn't catch nothing. Just recently on a duck hunt, the guy said, man, I was having a terrible day. I'm in, stuck in traffic. I got in, that, in Atlanta when the uh, airport shut down. He said, you call me, give me some of my money back. You made my day, and we will be back. And that was a week after the hunt. So it really made his day because he thought that was gone. You can be a great fisherman, a good business operator, and the life of the party. But the one thing you can't do without is an understanding family. The most important thing is your wife and your family has to have a life of their own outside of you. You know, they have to have women's clubs. They have to have uh, things for the children to be doing because you're going a lot. This is a demanding sport or, or business. You know, I, I've dedicated my life to it and, you know, I, I made sure my girls didn't suffer. I was there for every big event, but there's a lot of nights I'm not home. So Carmen's got, you know, she's got things to do. She's got friends, she has groups. She has, you know, she's got a life outside of me that she can enjoy. But if they're dependent on you and, and you're their whole life and they don't do anything, it's gonna be very tough to be a fishing charter guy. Any regrets looking back at your 40 years of no, I, I wish I'd have built this lodge earlier. You know, I didn't build it until I was 42, this one. But you know, that's a big step to take, to, especially here where hurricanes are in South Louisiana, and to build a, a building of this magnitude. It's a big step, but I don't regret it one second, you know, and rebuilding it too, but <laughs> after Katrina. But you know, it's, it's what I am, it's what I do, and I love what I do. I love people, I love hunting, I love fishing, so it's been perfect for me. the kitchen of Frenier Landing Restaurant over in Laplace with Chef Joe Boudreau. Joe, we're going to be cooking a whole stuffed fried flounder. Yes, sir. Very popular dish. I bet you with the ladies, too. Uh, <laughs> we serve, this is one of our most uh, sold dishes that we have all the time. I think we can't even keep them in-house most of the time. By Sunday, you're lucky if you get one by the end of the day. If you're lucky enough to catch a flounder, pay attention to what Joe's doing and you'll be able to bring one at home. Right. So what do we do? How do we get started? Yeah. All right, so I order my whole flounder head on and uh, I'll just take my knife right here, right behind the gill, cut through here, just like that. And what I'm doing, I'm just cutting the head off so I can uh, get to the inside because nobody likes to see a head <laughs> on a plate. That's what I found Not in this out. country anyway. No, exactly, exactly, exactly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut along the back rib line uh -huh. 
to open it up. And that's called butterfly? Is butterflying, that yes okay. sir, that is correct. So what I'm doing is I'm feeling the backbone right here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna stick my knife right on the inside of it. And I'm just gonna draw it down. Then I'm gonna put my finger back in there to make sure I'm feeling the bones. Don't wanna leave any meat on there. I'm just gonna run my knife just a couple times through there, like so. Then you can see right here, nice bones. So then I'm gonna flip it over, do the same process over. Sharp knife really helps, huh? Very sharp knife will help. Very sharp. So I'm just gonna run it like this. Mm -hmm. One more time. Just like that. So now we have a butterfly flounder. Now I'm gonna move it over to the flower. Make sure you coat it really, really well. And then I'm gonna open them up. Like so. This is just ordinary flounder. This no is all purpose anything. flour. That's mm -hmm. all it is. And then where the season is gonna come in. It's going to be after the egg wash dip, but make sure you open up the inside, make sure all this is inside nice and coated. Now is that just egg and water or is it egg, egg and milk? Egg and water is how we do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been working on this for almost 10 years now. It'll be 10 years very soon. Happy anniversary here at Thank Frenier you. Lady. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what this is, this is a seasoned flour. Okay. Um, Traditionally, when we uh, go to a seafood restaurant, you have a fish fry, which is more cornbread. But here, we like to keep it a little bit different, and it's a seasoned flour, which is where you, all your seasonings packed into this, right here. So you got it all packed into the body cavity there, too. Oh, right? yeah. I yeah. pack it in there, make sure it's nice and coated, coated. inside and out, backside, frontwards. And then from here, we're going to go to the fryer. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'll drop it in our fryer, which is at 325. Upside down, of course, so it'll open up and nice butterfly wide open so we can stuff it. Uh, how long is this gonna fry and process gonna take? About five to six minutes, and then uh, we'll let it sit and drain for about a minute or two just so all the grease dries out, and then we'll put it on the plate and be able to stuff it, sauce it, and send it out. All right, good stuff, coming up. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection and rich with tradition. A taste that's savory, crispy, and a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. This is Don Dubuque asking you to join me as a member of the Coastal Conservation Association. For 30 years, CCA has worked in Louisiana to conserve our incredible fisheries, making sure that our fishing is great today and for generations to come. Whether looking out for redfish and specks, eliminating gill nets, building reefs across the coast, or work at the state capitol and in D.C., CCA is doing what's best for the fish and the sport we love so much. Your $30 membership will ensure that this work and our great fishing endures well into the future. Go to CCALouisiana.com and join CCA today. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. Joe has now got our flounder deep fried and we're ready for the finishes touches. Joe, what do we do from here? All right, from here, we uh, sauteed our crab cake, house made, and we're gonna stick it right inside of the flounder right there. Then we're gonna take our crawfish cream sauce, like so. And what was in that cream sauce? This cream sauce is simple, simple. It's heavy cream, some basil, garlic powder, crawfish, a little bit of the crawfish fat just to make that extra orange and we got to have some veggies and you always got to like? you always got to serve the veggies we serve squash zucchini and uh, broccoli right on the top like so 
And she's now ready, it's huh? ready to eat. Right. Yes, sir. Let's give it a shot. All right. And you got to try to get a little bit yeah, of the flounder. Got to get the And inside. the stuffing and the cream all yes, at one time. Yes, sir. Mmm. Mm. You can't catch a flounder yourself. Mm -hmm. Come here to Fernando Land and let Joe Boudreaux, the chef, take care of you. This is excellent, excellent. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. For Louisiana, hooping cranes are a cultural icon that we've lost and that we hope to restore. We hope that as more of our birds um, gain nesting experience and reach breeding age, that we'll have more pairs nesting and, and be successful on their own. We need your help to fund the whooping crane project. Please visit laWff.org and make a donation. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Thanks for watching another edition of Bayou Wild TV. Remember, you can get your merchandise at BayouWildTV.com. Just scroll down where you see the hats and shirts. Take them out on your outdoor adventures and check out all the episodes as well on YouTube. We're on Instagram. We're on social media everywhere. You can't miss us. And you can also come have lunch with us and talk a little bit of fishing and hunting here on Mondays at Morton's Restaurant on the Chifuncta River in Madisonville. See you then.